Um, yeah, a little more on electrodes. Typically, the anode is made of the metal that's oxidized. For example, in here, uh, we've got zinc uh, as, the, as the anode here, and that's literally the metal that is dissolving into zinc 2 plus. On the other side, we start off with some copper. We're getting additional copper plated on to the cathode, um, and that, that makes the most sense. We don't have to uh, you know, bring in additional metals as well. You make the anode of the same metal as being oxidized, and the cathode made of the same metal as produced by the reaction. Uh, and that's, uh, that's good because you can get you know, the electrons transferred more easily. Um, sometimes your reduction reaction will involve the oxidation reduction of an ion to a different oxidation state, but it stays an ion. Or an oxidation, oxidation reduction of a gas, you can frequently get H plus uh, uh, reduced into H2. Uh, so we may use an inert electrode. So this is an example of an inert electrode uh, reaction where, where the reduction is the manganate ion going to the manganese 2 plus ion. And so uh, in this case, uh, a common uh, cathode for this would be platinum uh, because you can get a catalysis of that reaction occurring on the platinum surface. So the reaction occurs on the surface. So the electrons can flow uh, uh, into, uh, into that reaction flow. Uh, from the, uh, the manganate ion and create uh, mag uh, manganese 2 plus at the surface because the electrons go through here uh, and then uh, flow onto the ions that are at the surface. So we call this an inert electrode because it does not uh, participate in the reaction but provides a surface on which the transfer of electrons can take place. In this case, the reduction is a manganate plus five electrons uh, plus H uh, plus 8H plus goes to uh, manganese plus 4H2O liquid. So that would be uh, an example of an inert cathode because in this case the reduction um, does not actually involve the metal. It just involves the change of uh, reduction of, of two ions. There's no solid metal being created. Okay, uh, some summary of terminology just to help keep track all the different labels that are going on. So all of these are equivalent. Electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. And one way to remember that, A to C, they go alphabetically from anode to cathode. Electrons go from anode to cathode. From oxidation to reduction half cells, right? Oxidation is a loss of electrons. Uh, and so therefore the electrons have to go from there to reduction, which are gaining electrons. So they go from the oxidation half cell to the reduction half cell. Oxidation and anode both start with vowels. A cathode and reduction both starts with consonants. So that's how you can remember it. Oxidation anode are the same things. Cathode reduction, those are the same. Oxidation anode, both vowels. Cathode reduction, both consonants. Uh, it goes from a higher potential energy, which for electrons is minus charge to a lower potential energy, positive charge. Uh, yeah, so electrons are always going from the high potential energy spontaneously to the low potential energy. One thing uh, that's, that, uh, that occurs when you start thinking about the electrical circuits as well, annoyingly, current is defined as the flow of positive electrical energy. So uh, if the flow of electrons is this way, the flow of current is actually in the opposite direction if you're thinking about it in electrical terms. I'm going to try to talk about it more in terms of the flow of electrons because that makes a little more sense if you're talking about um, oxidation and reduction. But do remember that you know, in sort of standard electrical current uh, uh, um, um, of terminology, the flow of current is the flow of positive electrical energy rather than negative electrical energy. So flow of electrons in one direction actually means a current in the opposite direction. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Benjamin Franklin should have uh, decided that electrons were, were negative instead of positive uh, when he was uh, you know, studying uh, electricity. You didn't know precisely about electrons. He should have you know, defined electrical flow in the other direction. Um, he came up with the same convention. And so, so uh, yeah, we, we, we're stuck with this. The action, the overall reaction that's occurring. You know, even, we, have a, we have the same overall reaction occurring, whether it's occurring in a cell by itself or whether it's occurring in these two half cells. And this would be iron uh, solid plus uh, uh, Ag plus Aq going to uh, Fe2 plus Aq plus Ag solid. So you notice that you know, what we have on the left side, they're never actually in the same environment together. The electrons are, are, are carried from one cell to the next. Of course, we have to balance this. The electrochemical cell diagram doesn't necessarily show a balanced stoichiometry. So we need to balance this in terms of the number of electrons transferred as well. So that is what, um, that is how you draw a cell diagram and what the reaction is that is equivalent to that cell diagram. 
uh, you know, if we have an inert platinum, platinum electrode in this situation, then um, what it would be is that we've got a solid iron on one side and then uh, uh, the, the electrolyte, the uh, Fe2 plus aqueous, uh, the double line indicating the, the, the two, the, the separate cells. And then we have all the species that are involved in the reaction uh, uh, other than the, the water itself, uh, uh, manganate uh, and uh, manganese two plus, uh, and these are even though one uh, you know they're, they're, we have both the things that are being oxidized and reduced, they're all occurring in solutions over there. The hydrogen sometimes you'll see that included, sometimes not. Remember, it does not change in oxidation state here. And then you've got the electrode here, which is the platinum electrode. It's not participating in the reaction. It just essentially serves as a catalyst for this reaction. Uh, yeah, so the hydrogen, sometimes you'd include it, sometimes you wouldn't, but the two things that are undergoing redox, those, um, do, um, those do occur, those are both in the solution, so they both occur to the left of the single line, to the right of the double line, of course, because they're in the other half cell. Okay, so that is how you, um, uh, how you what the, the terminology for the cells are, and how you write out cell notation for these cells, and that's the end of this segment.